Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of my favorite books from 2019. <laughs> So behind me, right here, all of these books on this shelf are all books that I gave five stars to. And this does not include some ebooks or audiobooks that I do not own physically. I do own most of them physically though. So the beginning portion of this video is just going to be me listing off all of the books that I gave five stars to in 2019. I gave 46 books five stars out of the 184 that I read in 2019. That's a lot of five star books. I'm very happy that I read some great books last year. So without further ado, here are all of the books that I gave five stars to in 2019. Sinful Empire by Megan March, Royally Screwed by Emma Chase, My Oxford Year by Julia Whelan, Royally Matched by Emma Chase, Royally Endowed by Emma Chase, The English Roses by Madonna, this was a reread for me, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, this was a reread, Wait for You by Jennifer L. Armentrout, Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor, The Governess Game by Tessa Dare, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover, Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye, Royally Yours by Emma Chase, The English Roses Too Good to Be True by Madonna, Saga Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Stables, Hurts to Love You by Alicia Rye, Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward, Saga Volume 7 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, Saga Volume 8 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, and Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, Lover Unbound by J.R. Ward, Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, Lover Avenged by J.R. Ward, The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare, Lover Mine by J.R. Ward, Make Me Bad by R.S. Gray, Lover Unleashed by J.R. Ward, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, Within These Walls by J.L. Berg, The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry, Lover at Last by J.R. Ward, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling, The Illustrated Edition with illustrations by Jim K. This was a reread for me. The King by J.R. Ward. Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. The Shadows by J.R. Ward. The Beast by J.R. Ward. Blood Vow by J.R. Ward. Blood Fury by J.R. Ward, Well Met by Jen DeLuca, and finally Eleanor and Grey by Brittany C. Cherry. So the next portion of this video is going to be me talking about my top 10 favorite books of 2019. So my 10 favorites out of the bunch. It was very hard. I put them in order of my least favorite to favorite top 10 books, but I love every single one of these books behind me. These next 10 are my favorite of the year and some of them of all time. Coming in at number 10, we have Within These Walls by J.L. Berg. I originally listened to this through Audible Escape and this is a romance book. This is about our main character named Lila and she is in the hospital with a heart condition. Then our other main character's name is Jude and he is a night nurse at the hospital that she is staying at and he has been stuck in this hospital because his fiance died there a year or two ago and he has never been able to leave the place. So he's basically stuck in his grief but then one night he meets Lila in the hospital at night and they strike up a beautiful friendship that blossoms into something more. I really really loved this book. The relationship between Lila and Jude was just fantastic. I related a lot to Lila because I deal with some medical issues. This was such a beautiful read and one of my favorite romances of the year. Coming in at number nine, we have The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. This is a historical romance book in a series, the third book in a series, The Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. I'm in love with this series so much. Another book on the series that I read this year is in my five star reads to The Governess Game behind me and this one is about Lady Penelope who basically lives in her brother's house by herself but she has kind of like converted the house into kind of like a pet sanctuary or an animal sanctuary so she takes in animals that people don't want anymore or that are injured and she nurses them back to health and then our other main character is Gabriel and he is trying to sell the house that is next door to Penny's for a higher profit trying to renovate it, sell for higher profit, but then he realizes that Penny has a bunch of animals that make noise and leave a mess and no one's going to want to live next door to a house that has 
all those pets in it. It turns out that Penny's brother is coming to visit her soon. In order for Penny to stay in the house and be kind of independent, she has to get rid of a bunch of the animals or find homes for the animals. So Gabe and Penny team up to find homes for these pets and in the midst of that, they end up sparking up their own romance. This is definitely my favorite out of the series so far. Penny is like my favorite character out of the bunch. She is quirky and funny and just like unapologetically herself and I love that about her. I love Gabe's character too because he comes off as this brooding man when in reality you just gotta get to know him and I really loved that. Coming in at number eight we have All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This book wrecked me. It wrecked me. That's all I have to say. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So this is about our two main characters Quinn and Graham and back in the day they end up realizing that their significant others are cheating on them with each other. So Quinn and Graham end up meeting by catching their significant other cheating. So they're both sitting outside the room that their significant others are cheating on them in. <laughs> uh, so they end up kind of like comforting each other or talking to each other about this. Months later they end up actually starting up a relationship and it's the start of their relationship. But then there's also chapters flipping back and forth between that time and then now present day when they are married and they're going through a lot. They are on the brink of divorce and so you get to see the differing timelines where they are so in love back in the day and now where they are barely even talking to each other. There is a trigger warning in this book for miscarriages and difficulty conceiving. If that is a touchy subject for you, maybe steer clear of this book. I honestly had no idea that that was going to be a part of this book and my biggest fear in life is not being able to conceive a child. I know that's not really a big fear to have for some people. I could always adopt, I know that or have a surrogate or whatever. I don't even have a boyfriend, Avery, like chill. <laughs> what I'm saying is I've always wanted to be a mother and so it scares me to no end maybe figuring out later on in life that I cannot have my own child, which I shouldn't be thinking that far in the future, but knowing me, I do. Um, I almost did not finish this book because I was very, very anxious. I was almost having a panic attack reading this book, like thinking, oh my god, what if that happens to me? Oh my god, I was so scared reading this book sometimes, which shouldn't necessarily happen to people when they read this book. Just for me personally, that's what's going on. But I put it down for a little bit, took a little bit of a break during, I believe, the Buzzwordathon. Picked it back up again, and I'm so glad that I did. It's a beautiful story, a beautiful read, a beautiful tale about a couple that goes through some highs and lows and some hardships in life, how they can overcome that, maybe save their love and their marriage. I love this book. This is the first book that I read that already dealt with a couple being married, which makes me more intrigued to read more books that deal with couples already being married in romance novels. Next we have The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry coming in at number seven. I love this book. This is another hard-hitting one. A lot of my favorites are the more emotional hard-hitting books. I guess that's kind of my taste. <laughs> so I have to give kind of like a vague summary about this book just because if I say too much it can spoil you. Uh, so basically this is about our main character woman who loves to express herself and wear hard on her sleeve. This is about a man also who doesn't like to show his feelings and he gets even more bottled up in his feelings when his wife leaves him and his premature newborn daughter. Our woman main character steps in to help raise his daughter and help him take care of his daughter um, because he is a full-time writer. I really really loved this book. I really want to get my own copy to add to my collection because I absolutely loved it. I really want to read more in the series. This is the fourth book in like a companion series which you do not need to read in order. I did not and I did not miss anything whatsoever going on in the book. I do really want to read the first three books in the series though so hopefully I will be able to do that in 2020. Next I have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. So this is about our main character woman named Kala and she has had a very rough relationship with her father. She has not personally physically seen her father since she was two years old and she is maybe in her early to mid 20s. Her father has just never 
been there for her ever and then one day she gets a call telling her that he is very sick and you might want to come visit him from one of her dad's friends and so she travels to Alaska and she lives in Canada. She travels to Alaska to visit her father who basically lives in the middle of nowhere Alaska and he is a pilot and she also sparks up a relationship with one of her father's pilots Jonah. This book is way more than a romance book. There is romance in here that is absolutely amazing. I loved it. It's kind of like a hate to love. This deals a lot with family and reconnecting with your family and realizing how you can reconnect with someone that you haven't known your entire life. Cal's relationship with her father is beautiful to read about. I loved it. Cried reading this book. One of my favorite books of all time now. As you can see behind me, we have a bunch of J.R. Ward Black Dagger Brotherhood books. So I had to pick one Black Dagger Brotherhood book to pick for my favorites of the year because I read almost all of them this year and it is my favorite series of the year. So I am picking Lover Mine by J.R. Ward. If you didn't know about the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, this is an urban fantasy romance series dealing with vampires. Each book is about a vampire couple basically in this secret society um, that humans don't know about. It's an amazing fun series. I love it. The audiobooks are great. I've been listening to them all on audio. This one is my favorite in the series, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why, I just, I keep coming back to this one. This one is about John Matthew, who is my favorite character in the series. His relationship with someone and their story in this book and what they have to go through in this book is a lot. <laughs> this one is just the most memorable. I can probably remember the most from this book. Um, and it's probably one of the biggest ones. I just love John Matthew and his love interest together. Their story is beautiful and it spans over generations and I love them a lot. Let me know down below what your favorite book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series is. I would love to know. Number four on my list is Full Tilt by Emma Scott. So this is about our main character woman named Casey who is a part of a band but she's basically almost about to hit rock bottom. She's an alcoholic she's smoking, she's getting basically blackout drunk every night to forget what is going on in her life. And then our other main character is Jonah. He is her band's limo driver for the night and then one night Casey gets put in the limo after her show alone and she is blackout passed out drunk. Jonah has no idea what to do with her because he drives her home but her house is locked. She has no keys. He has no idea what to do with her. So he decides to bring her back to his place and have her sleep on his couch for the night. And that is how their story starts. And that is how their romance starts. It's kind of like a friends to lovers-esque story. It is beautiful and heartbreaking. Jonah has a heart condition that he struggles with throughout this whole book which I also connected to because I deal with some heart issues. I loved this book. I have a physical copy coming in the mail any day now to add to my collection. I absolutely love it and can't wait to read more of Emma Scott's books. Coming in at number three, we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Okay, <laughs> I might cry talking about this book. <laughs> I love Little Women with every fiber of my being. I love the movie, the old movie, the new movie, which is beautiful. I cried like eight times watching the new movie. I love the musical. I love this book a lot. So if you didn't know about this book, this is a classic um, dealing with four sisters during the Civil War era America. And it is basically just their lives and their stories and how you can live in a certain time period and each sister wants to do something different with her life. Jo wants to be a writer and to be independent and basically to never marry. And then you have Meg who wants to be married and have kids and to live a peaceful life. And you have Amy who wants to be an artist and be beautiful and have a adventurous life. And then you have Beth who just wants to stay home and chill with her mom. <laughs> and her sisters. She just wants to chill. I love every single one of these characters. I love every single one of these sisters. This classic is maybe almost my new favorite classic of all time. This was just a beautiful experience to read. I had never read the book previously. I grew up with the movie and loved it. 
I watched the musical and loved it. So I finally read this one this year, I believe during Classics-a-thon. I'm so glad that I did. It's, it's wonderful and beautiful. And I know this is not everyone's cup of tea. Some people may say that it's boring. I just love how you get to see four different women have such different personalities and love each other in this time period that was very, very hard to live in. I love it a lot. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Coming in at number two, Royally Matched by Emma Chase. Don't let the cover fool you. This book is fantastic. Like some people may be scared of reading books that have naked people or shirtless people on the cover, but this book is beautiful. This book is amazing. Don't let the cover fool you. It's awesome. So this is about Prince Henry of a made-up country called Wesco. He decides to enlist in or start up Bachelor Royal Edition, essentially. He's the bachelor and a bunch of eligible young ladies from his country are all competing to be a princess, but that's not the main story. Our other main character in this book, the love interest Sarah, is um, the sister to one of the contestants and so her sister brings her along so Sarah comes to the shoot or the TV show shooting or whatever but Sarah is not one of the contestants and Sarah is very shy and reserved and innocent. I feel like she is me. Like if you want to know what I'm like in real life I totally recommend reading this book. Sarah also has, I don't remember the condition but she has a condition that she developed because of her PTSD through some trauma she dealt with as a child. I loved how we got to see a new representation that I've never heard about before. She like freezes when there's loud sounds. I don't remember the name of it. This book is amazing. Sarah is me in a book and I love her relationship with Henry and how Henry kind of helps her come out of her shell and realize that she doesn't need to be in the corner all the time and that she's beautiful enough and smart enough and like intelligent enough to step out of the corner but also of course keep her nose in a book when she wants to. Her and Henry's relationship is beautiful. I love Henry. His wit is amazing and him and Sarah are so cute and I need you to read this book. And lastly, coming in at number one, we have Wait For You by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a new adult book. It takes place in college. I read this book towards the beginning of the year. It has still held a special place in my heart. I have read this book twice this year and both times loved it. I listened to this on audio actually both times. Um, I really want to physically read it. Hopefully soon maybe 2020 we'll see so this is about our main character named avery who moves across the country to go to college and she moves across the country to escape a very very troubled past in her hometown and she wants to basically start over with her life and forget about all the stuff that she went through in her past but on her first day of class she meets cameron hamilton who's the ex soccer star at the college that she goes to it's their relationship it is amazing. Cam is kind of like, I want to say like kind of like my dream guy. He's very understanding, he is very patient and kind, and he's also sexy <laughs> and very very funny. I really 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 love this couple. I love how Cam helps Avery through some things that she doesn't want to get through, but she has to. There are points in this book where I found Avery to be a little bit frustrating because Cam asks her what happened before she moved to their new college and she just kept saying oh nothing it's nothing it's fine it's fine she kept denying that something was happening which at times I was just wanting to say Avery tell him what's going on but then if I was in that situation I honestly have no idea if I would be vulnerable enough to talk about something that Avery went through I love this book one of my favorites of all time I totally recommend it it's beautiful it's amazing it's funny. It's just a grand old time and I totally, totally recommend it. So there you have it. Those are my favorite books from 2019. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.